sophistication. When we look at what's depicted on the stones, we see what appears to be brain surgery seen here. Uh, in great detail, we know of the terplanning, uh, the uh, mysterious uh, holes drilled in the skull, which uh, almost all show evidence of healing. Uh, they did it very well. Uh, but this appears to depict something more sophisticated than that. We have found a number of skulls that had been operated on, if you please, with brain surgery, and almost all of them show significant healing, showing they survived the surgery and continued to heal. Here, almost completely healed over. Uh, these, again, were not dummies that were dragging their mate by the hair of the head and club in the other hand. These were uh, uh, men with sophisticated intelligence. Here they seem to be performing a Caesarean surgery. One of the things that we see depicted on these stones that uh, is not that impressive to me, maybe to some, is that uh, about a third of them are some of the most disgusting pornography uh, that you could ever imagine. This is as close as I'll get to showing it to you, but it's a book that depicts this and we have museums devoted just to uh, this kind of this pornographic uh, uh, depiction from uh, burial stones and from uh, ceramic figurines from uh, uh, their drinking vessels uh, from vases and so forth uh, that shows the kind of culture that existed at that time it was a disgusting culture though it was very uh, prosperous and wealthy, and uh, uh, they, they had slaves, they had lots of gold, and they lived very well. They were amazing engineers. We're looking here at a water channel that was designed to bring water from the Andes uh, over all well, about 150 miles, and it's underground, about 50 feet underground most of the way, through very uh, amazingly sophisticated channels here surfacing so that people would have access to the water along the way. Most of the access is gained through these spiral accesses where you go down to the level where the water was and uh, you have seven of these spiral accesses in one of the major cities there. And so it continued to take the water along the way 50 feet underground and the people could go down and get the water and then come back. Notice the description of the engineering involved in industrial research and development. Uh, the hydraulic simulation showed that the Chimu channels were completely modern in design. They relied on concepts of fluid dynamics that, were West, that Western hydrologists only started to apply in the past century, again, before the time of Christ. But what's really interesting about these burial stones collected by Cabrera and a number of others uh, is the fact that they depict dinosaurs. Here is one of the large stones here in the center of uh, a room he has built for displaying this in the front of his 300-year-old mansion. He is a descendant of the conquistadors. This is one of the castles they built, and he lives in it. And of course, he's, he, was, uh, he passed away in 2002. But looking closely at uh, this stone, you can see the very obvious dinosaur with the dermal frills on its back, a man sitting atop fighting, evidently. And then we look at the top of the stone, and we see it's ornately covered with, uh, with carvings. And uh, a closer view, you see the upper right-hand corner, the very obvious sauropod dinosaur with the, the man in his mouth dangling by the foot. Uh, beautifully and artistically done in stone. But there are thousands of these, some 11,000 burial stones have been collected by the Cabreras. Uh, about a third of them are this disgusting pornography, and then about a third of them are of dinosaurs. Uh, here we see most, uh, many of them are shown with man associated, but uh, in battle. Here he's chopping the neck. Uh, in this one, he's already chopped the neck and holding the head in his hand of possibly a juvenile form, but then looks like Mama has got him <laughs> from behind, or at least another younger one attacking him, and, uh, together with a much larger one on the same stone. Uh, another one here is being bitten as he rides on the back. Uh, notice the variety in styles. This is rather oriental in style. 
uh, very different, but uh, obviously very similar. This one's very, uh, you know, maybe literalistic, if you please. Uh, some almost cartoonish. Another oriental style dinosaur. Uh, this beautiful stone is almost four feet tall. Uh, again, very artistically done with the dermal frills on the back, which were written up for the first time in Geology Magazine in uh, 1992. Uh, when Mr. Sinclair depicted his dinosaur on the Sinclair dinosaur sign. He didn't know it had dermal frills on the back, but they did down in, uh, in Peru uh, over 2,000 years ago, and uh, here we see them depicted on the stones. It looks like a scene maybe out of Jurassic Park. <laughs> uh, no question about the species that's depicted here. Uh, some rather artistically and stylistically done uh, cartoonish and uh, then very literal. Uh, here are a number of different species depicted on the same stone. Uh, again, a tremendous variety is obvious. One person, again, did not do this. But this is not the only museum that depicts uh, dinosaurs on the burial stones. Another very interesting display of these stones is seen in the museum there in Inca. It was actually established by Dr. Cabrera over 20 years ago. They have a collection, but they will not display it. We had talked to the brother of Carlos Solti, uh, Pablos, who had donated the collection to the museum uh, uh, about 15 years ago, and uh, we had seen pictures of the stones that he had donated. His brother had excavated them in the 50s, uh, near the village of Okakehi, and uh, then donated this to the museum upon the death of his brother. Uh, we went there, said, we want to see this collection. They said, it doesn't exist, that's a myth. We said, we've seen the pictures, we've talked to the one who donated the collection. They said, well, yes, okay, it does exist, but they're in storage and you can't see them. We insisted, saying this is a museum that's not supposed to hide things, it's supposed to show things. They said, well, you can't do this unless you're authorized by an official museum with 48 hours notice. We said, we think we can handle that, and we did. We got a letter from an official state authorized museum authorizing us to examine them. With 48 hours notice, we came back. They still refused. They said, you will not be allowed to examine these. They were stonewalling. Uh, Dr. Swift eventually did gain access last year and got pictures, and yes, they are virtually, well, they are the same as the ones that we see in the Ewell's Rudd collection uh, with dinosaurs on them. Uh, we did get to examine the ones in the collection at the Aeronautical Museum in Lima, pictured here. Uh, years ago, there were many more. They have disappeared over the years. Uh, there were several hundred initially. There are about 40 that remain. But here we see one on the floor in the room where they are displayed, and uh, these are the poorer ones. The better ones have disappeared, but you can still see uh, the dinosaurs on the stones displayed in the Aeronautical Museum uh, in Lima. In the museum in Nazca, likewise, they have some of the carved stones on display. And here we see uh, Dr. Swift <laughs> laboring as he holds up one of the stones for the camera. The stones are exhibited in the Cabrera Museum, where there are 11,000 of them, in the Museum of Inca, where they're hidden, and uh, they wouldn't allow us to see them. Uh, Dr. Swift did eventually get and then the Nazca Museum, and the Aeronautical Museum, and the Naval Museum. But we see here the museums which have these stones, all but one of them have them on display that can be seen today. We traveled to the village of Okakehi, where a number of these stones, or at least in the area, where a number of these stones had been excavated in the 50s uh, by Carlos Solti, uh, who, is, uh, the, who was the rector of the uh, College of Engineers in Lima. And uh, there we see an obviously very depressed area. Uh, we see individuals who are just eking out a living. Um, Basilio Achua is one of the individuals here who has found a number of these stones and had taken them to Dr. Cabrera. Uh, he took us out to the place where many had been excavated and we could see the actual tombs. 
and see some of the stones in the tombs. As we walked along this desolate area, you could see the bones that had been strewn along the way by the grave robbers who weren't interested in the bones at all, but in the artifacts that they could dig out to sell. Uh, in these tombs, you see amazing preservation, even of flesh parts. Uh, in an area where it hasn't rained for 100 years, uh, the dryness of the desert is excellent for preservation. But in these tombs, you can see the remains of the mummies. This is a trophy head that was worn on the belt by this brutal culture. In one of the nearby museums, you see the skulls with a hole in the head. This means that was a, a trophy head. It had been worn by somebody who had evidently killed them in battle. But as we look at these tombs, we see often babies with mothers. Maybe if the mother died, they couldn't take care of the babies. And uh, I, I don't know the whole story, but it doesn't look like a, a nice story. Uh, here we see.